in this video, I'm going to go over multi-view sketching. All right, so objects may be drawn in different ways. You've went over the pictorial. Now we're getting ready to go over the multi-view. So multi-view looks like this. All right, this is the front, the top, and the right view. All right, so the multi-view drawings are better for showing true size and shape. They each view shows two dimensions. And when combined with dimensions, serves as the main form of communication between designers and manufacturers. You've already uh, learned how to do the pictorial drawings. I remember those were isometric, oblique, and, pict and uh, perspective pictorials. Right? But they're better for visualizing the object. You're going to be using those in uh, brainstorming. Uh, also, whenever you're trying to uh, draw in your develop a solution. <clears throat> Alright, so all three dimensions are shown in a single view for the pictorial. I also have multi-view drawings. Uh, you're going to be able to look at the three dimensional objects with width, height, and depth. Right, width being side to side, height being top to bottom, and depth being front to back. Here's an example of an isometric view of an object. So whenever you're drawing it as a multi-view drawing, here's what the top view would look like. Notice we have an edge here because we have a change in the depth. If we turn it, notice this is what the front view would look like. Again, drawing all of those edges that you see. We don't have a change in depth, so we're not going to have any edges shown. And if we turn it to look at the right side, this would be our right side view. And we'd have a line here because we have a change in depth happening at this edge. All right, so our height, width, and depth. Our width is going to be here, height, and then depth. Right, so the height is shown on the front and the right side. The width is on the front and the top view, and your depth is shown on the top and the right view. Okay, so whenever you're sketching a multi-view drawing, you're going to lay out the boxes within which the individual views will occur using points of construction lines. All right, notice that all of our views will be all lined up. Okay, so I'd have my views, my front, my top, and my right. Notice how they're all lined up, just like in the slide before. All right, so the multi-view drawing example here. Notice I've got my width here. I've got my heights, and I have my depths. And they're all lined up just like in the slide before. Notice how they're all lined up symmetrically. Okay, also we need to remind um, about whenever you're doing the orthographic uh, view selection. And you'll notice that I'll be using orthographic and multi-view interchangeably. Uh, they're the same type of drawing. Uh, but you need to remember how to pick your front view. All right, so the recommendations, and again, these are recommendations, all right, but uh, most natural position or use shows the best shape and characteristic contours, the longest dimensions, the fewest hidden lines, and the most stable and natural position. So usually you'll see it being the longest dimension, but say you had a chair. If you looked at the front of a chair, um, the best shape and the contours are going to be looking straight on to it while it's sitting up, and that would also be the most natural position. So you just have to use these as recommendations to decide what you feel would be the best front view. Okay, again, orthographic and multi-view. I'm going to use those uh, interchangeable, right? Because an ortho means straight, graphic means drawing. So an orthographic view is shown looking straight at one side of the object. Okay, looking at the line of sight, this particular object, this would be its front view. All right, so how many views are there? All right, so we keep talking about the front, the top, and the right. But if you look cubes, just like a dice here, have six sides. All right, so in, since each side of the die will have its own view, 
well then there must be six possible orthographic views. All right, so all views must be arranged correctly. And so you imagine uh, the cube, if you fold it out to get that proper alignment, okay, this being your front, your top, your right, well then this would be the left, this would be the bottom, and then the back side can be put in any of these locations. Okay. So the best way to understand orthographic projection is to imagine an object contained inside of a glass box, just like a, that cube that we just looked at with the die. There's a total of six glass walls surrounding the object. Each wall represents a projection plane onto which a two-dimensional object view will be created also referred to as a plane of projection or picture plane, an imaginary surface that exists between the viewer and the object. The surface onto which a two-dimensional view of three-dimensional object is projected and created. All right, so start by focusing on the front projection plane. The person standing at the front of the object would see only the five corners identified in black. And then projection lines are used to project each corner outward until they reach the projection plane. Okay, and then um, you would fill in these lines with object lines. All right, an imaginary line that is used to locate or project the corners, edges, and features of the three-dimensional object onto imaginary two-dimensional surface. And this is the slide where they show the visible edge, uh, the visible edges. All right, the projection plane by connecting the projected corners, and you're going to fill that in with your object lines. Okay, so notice in this cube here, here's our front view. Notice I have an object line here and here because I have a change in depth. I have an object line here and here as well because I have a change in depth. Again on this side, when we look at the left side, we know that there's an object line on the right side. So it's going to be referred to as a hidden line on the opposite side. It shows that there is a change in depth on the other side. It means that there is a cutout on the other side and that's where I get those hidden lines. All right, so how does this work on the other objects? All right, place the object in a glass box, then unfold the box. Again, look at this where I have an object line here because I have an edge, change in depth, also one here. If I turned it to the left, I would have a hidden line on the back or the left side because I have a change in depth on this side. All right, it shows that something was cut out. Now, uh, on the next one, notice we're going to show the hidden lines. We should have a hidden line here because there's a cutout. Okay. Notice we have a cutout, an object line here. So right along the same level, we would have a hidden line. Okay, so how many views do you need to show? Do you need to show three? Did you need to show all six? Or do you just need to do one? So if you have one view that is uniform thickness and shape for the object, and two views would be identical, then you only have to show that one view. Right? All dimensions properly and easily shown on one view. You don't have to draw extra views. Only one view is going to be required. All right, two views. If it's a symmetrical part, a third view would be identical to one of the others. Or a second view is necessary for depth, then you're going to go ahead and do two views. You won't need that third view. In this one, they just have the front and the top. But a right view would look exactly like this view, the front view. So they don't need that third view. So they would only draw two views. All right, and then most of the time you're using three views. Right, in this class, that's mostly what you're going to be using. And if you know, you're not sure, go ahead and draw all three views.
The following are rules that govern line precedence in sketches and technical drawings. Right, so whenever you are drawing these, do your object lines first, then draw your hidden lines, and then any cutting plane lines and uh, your center lines. Right, so your object lines takes precedence over hidden and center lines, then your hidden lines take precedence over center lines, and then your cutting plane lines takes precedence over all others because you've cut out all of those edges. That's why those would take precedence. So let's look at this. Here's a normal view. Notice these are the top views. These are the front views. Okay, so we'd have a hidden line for this circle. And then we're going to have a center line to show that this is a circle, not just a square cut out. Now here we've got object lines that we would draw first. The hidden lines are not going to be there because uh, the object lines are already there. Next, we have hidden lines again, but here we're going to have also a hidden line. So notice we draw our hidden lines, then we would draw a center line. Right? Also, on this particular picture, there should be little lines, which you'll see in the next uh, slide. There should be a little line showing that there was a center line there as well. And here we've got an object line and the hidden lines on the side. Right. Our center lines are used to show the theoretical perfect center of holes, arcs, cylinders, and bolt circles. A bolt circle is used to position holes or cylinders in a circular pattern. Notice whenever we have a hidden line here, right, space then, space, and then a center line extends past the edge. Right, so we have a center line here with object lines. This is our top view, right? So we have our object lines drawn before those hidden lines. So we don't have hidden lines. We have the center line. On this particular one, we have a hidden line because of this cutout. And then the center lines are drawn as little a space and then lines outside of that. And the hidden is over the center line. Okay. Right, so center lines will break their normal shape of a long dash interrupted by a short dash if an object or hidden line needs to take precedence. When only a short dash is used to represent a center line, there must be some space shown between the object and the short dash. Okay, here's some examples of center lines. Anytime you have a circle, you need to draw that it is a circular shape with a center line. Even though there's not a hole through it, it's still in a circular shape, so there's a center line. This view, we look straight on to the circle. That's why it's showing the center line drawn in this way. And then we have a center line also in this. Right, notice that we have all of these lined up, showing our construction lines, so that they're all on the same level. Center lines are all on the same level as well. Okay. And basically they are still it's the little box on top it gets larger and larger, but notice how my center lines are still staying the same. All right, so each of the blocks at the right has the same overall dimensions and color. What else do you have in common? All right, look at each of these and think about that. All right, well, they all have identical top views. They're all going to have edges these top views because we do have a change in depth so we're going to have object lines. It's the front view and the right view that's going to be able to show me then uh, the difference in the shapes. The top views will all be the same though. All right, so match the pictorials to the multi-view drawings below. Okay, you might want to pause it here so that way you can uh, go through and try to match those but I'm going to go ahead and go through them. So you might want to pause between each one. Okay, so A and 10 match. B and 11. C and 5. D and 6. 
E and 1, F and 12, G and 7, H and 2, J and 8, K and 4, L and 9, and M and 3. Now I'm going to show you in some practice sketches how to draw uh, on uh, these multi-view sketches. Alright, so watch those uh, videos next.